what's up everybody welcome to my channel this is you two can be great this is the marriage to um marriage boot camp reality star season 16 episode 2 hip-hop edition this title is drop the mic now i only have a few things i want to talk about with this particular episode with Jocelyn and Ballistic, it started off with them arguing and her basically saying, if you don't marry me, we're not together. If you don't marry me, you don't get this body. If you don't marry me, I'm not wasting this on you. And Ballistic is telling her, the way that you speak to me is not how you speak to your man. The way that you talk to me is not how you talk to a man in general. Now, as they keep arguing, we learn something about Jocelyn. She said something that kind of rings a bell to me. She said that she has not had any commitment with her mom, her dad, any of the guys that she's dated. They don't want to commit to her in any way, shape, or form. And at this point, she's scarred. And y'all remember in Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, when she asked Stevie to marry her. And Stevie kind of made a fool out of her. He never took her seriously. He saw her as the stripper from a club that he saved. And she proposed to him because she was impatient. He said yes, like a fool, when he didn't mean it. And then embarrassed her by proposing to her low-key, or kind of, in front of Mimi, the girl that whose man she stole. It was a huge disrespect. And y'all remember that she, she basically socked him in the face on television. She was embarrassed. She was humiliated. Now that she's here on marriage boot camp, she wants to make sure that there's a guy out there also on national television that would accept her as a wife. It's almost like she's trying to redeem herself. But she's almost punishing Ballistic for something that happened to her from Stevie and other people in her past. And he seems to be a good guy. I feel like Jocelyn at this point is going to chase this man away if she doesn't change her behavior because she took the steps all wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I know this is a cliche, but if you want a, a marriage from somebody, if you want a commitment from somebody, you have to lock it up. I'm sorry. I know that that sounds so old school, but that is a fact because the person has to fall in love with your mind. They have to fall in love with your soul. Because the honeymoon phase doesn't last that long. Y'all know it lasts maybe about a year, a year and a half. After that, things get kind of like routine. You have to start pulling out tricks, buying toys, you know, doing, you know, handstands to make things more exciting. But if the person is already in love with your soul, your spirit, your personality, person that you are, even without that physical aspect involved, they still love you as a person. And that goes for any relationship that you are building. You want them to fall in love with who you are, not what you can do. Jocelyn keeps doing this cycle of making the mistake of giving it up to people because she happens to be good at what she does. She said it herself, both with males and female, and that's great. But now you're not able to listen because you think that that's going to keep them around. That's problem number one. Then we got um, challenge number two comes up and it's basically them figuring out what sparks their anger, what sparks their distrust of each other and their ETC. First, we got Bianca and Chosa, which I think that this couple is not going to make it. I don't care how much boot camp they have. They've been together for one year. And they've had so much problems. We find out that Bianca, when she gets mad, blows up his phone 600 times, 600 times. How do you call somebody 600 times in one sitting, 400 times in one sitting? What are you? Do you not have a life? Aren't you writing songs? Why are you calling somebody 600 times like you don't have something to do or they don't have something to do? Who wants to do that? Can't nobody reach that person's phone if you're blowing them up all the time that you didn't call them 600 times in one day. Like, that's just crazy. And he's basically telling her that when she does stuff like that, it's completely turned off because it means that you're doing it because you don't want nobody else to reach him. Bianca discloses something to us. She said that she has been pregnant with this guy three times. But at the same time, she tells us that she's only been with him for a year. Which is it? You can't have been pregnant three times in one year. Could you have been? Because she said that she's had two abortions and one miscarriage. And y'all have been together in one year. Number one... That sounds crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Number two, he says that he feels like she's lying. And number three, y'all remember Bianca was the one who said something about Amina in Love and Hip Hop when Amina and Tara had been pregnant at the same time by Peter. Amina got pregnant to get back at Tara. And she was like, I don't know. It just happened. Bianca, if y'all peeped, that was in the audience talking about get on birth control. Well, girl, you saying that you've been pregnant by this man three times, three times, why aren't, you, why aren't you on birth control? There is no reason for a woman that young to have two abortions and you know, at, not necessarily because it's something that's to her health, it's out of reckless behavior. I'm a firm believer in a woman has a choice to do whatever she wants to do with her body, whether she wants to keep the baby or not, that's her choice, that's her choice because it's, you know she's gonna be the one responsible to take care of this child. I get that. But when you're telling me you've been married, you've been with somebody for one year, y'all have this whole issue and you have been pregnant by that person three times, 
Clearly, you know you have problems in your relationship. Clearly, you know that this situation is not a healthy situation to bring a child in. So the responsible thing for you to do is to protect yourself from having to put your body through that procedure because the um, abortions are no joke. Those things do take a toll on your body, especially if you do it continuously. I don't know if that attributed to her having a miscarriage, but there's a possibility that it could have. You had three of them. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But she says this and Chosen says that sometimes you don't believe what she says. Especially when she says stuff like that because of how she acts. She starts crying again. And I'm like, wow. This is the most immature relationship I've ever... Like, I mean, y'all are young. You're just going to go your separate way. Don't even try to fix this. I think that their relationship might be fake. Because I'm watching this. I'm feeling like Bianca is chasing after a guy who's like basically holding her at her arm's length. Like, girl, you do the most. I'm off of you. I'm done with you. I'm going to go somewhere else. Maybe that's why he went after a white woman. Because last episode, she said that black love what happened to black love once we broke up he went straight for a white woman which tells me that maybe it's an on and off situation maybe that's that was what happened when she got pregnant in between those times but maybe he went to a white woman because he's telling you not to hit him not to call him 600 times when y'all are having a fight not to do pop-ups and try to fight somebody in his house not to go above and beyond sometimes ratchetness, ratchetness is not cute it's not cute. When you're in high school, middle school, they're like, ooh, ooh, yo, what's up? When you're an adult, it's pitiful. Stop it. Then we got the next one. We got Jocelyn and Ballistic. Who keeps, she keeps cutting him off, making his thoughts be relevant. Ballistic is telling her that she needs to learn how to talk to people. We already talked about this, and she's not listening. Then we got Aja and Styles P. Aja is savage. She's basically saying that every issue in their relationship is Styles P's fault, and he's admitting that he takes responsibility for everything, even when it's not his fault. That is not a good thing. In a relationship with somebody, if one person is always apologizing, it's going to get old. You have to at least understand that it takes two to make a relationship work and you have to own your own problems when you make a mistake. This man is saying that he just be like, oh, it's my fault. That's passive aggressive. You don't get anywhere. You don't solve anything. Then we got Michelle and Stu. Hot mess because Michelle is still pawning him off. Age is always going to be an issue. At this point, this chef needs to go on and cook with somebody else because I don't think she's ever going to change. Then we got Shawnee and CeeLo. Uh, they communicate differently, but at the same time, they communicate the same way. CeeLo is saying one thing, but the way he says it is like he's reading a Maya Angelou poem. Like, you know, I know why the cage bird sings. Phenomenal woman, that's you as beautiful as the birds singing like he's just he's like he's talking to her like he's writing a lyric and sometimes she says i just want you to get to the point if you love me tell me you love me don't sing me some hymn or you know or, you know don't sing me something let me know how you feel but CeeLo is so talented with words that i don't think sometimes he knows how to differentiate between the two and when they communicate that's what you get singing yeah i can't tell if he's if he sings when he's mad F you bitch. Like, it's just, it, I don't know how he does it, but it, it just, they communicate the same way because they're saying the same thing in just a different form. And then they just kept, things just get modeled up and they start fighting. And then CeeLo says something like, if she says something to me that I feel like is disrespectful, then I feel like I have to disrespect her too. Wrong answer, bruh. Wrong. You don't disrespect your woman in anger because you feel like she's disrespecting you. When you're in a fight, okay, food for thought, somebody has to be the level headed person. You have one aggressor, you have one peacemaker. If you're both aggressively attacking each other, you get nowhere, you don't solve anything. Let the other person get mad, voice their opinion however they want to voice, even if it's rude. When they're done and they've simmered down, you now approach your situation when they're calmer and then say, hey, this is what you did I didn't like, this is what you need to stop doing, but now that you can hear me and kind of, you know, register what I'm telling you, you need to understand that what you did was wrong. If both of y'all like rah, 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 you ain't going to get nowhere. Then we have... Style starts crying because he related so much to CeeLo and Shani's interaction with one another, which tells me a lot about maybe that's what he sees in their relationship. But Bianca said that she respects Styles P for crying because, you know, we know gangsters don't cry, but he's crying as a gangster. And we respect it for that. Then we got Michelle and Stu who are always not together. In 10 months, they're not together. We don't even know if they're even intimate because of how they act. Then Bianca and Chosers are a match made in hell, fighting over petty stuff, as usual, even after this, if this, um um skit or whatever was over there over there fighting they only been together for one year take a break we got um he said basically they're on the same they're on different planets chose says you know what if this doesn't work out we can be friends on the other side they flash back to bianca bianca's like we can never be friends which is it y'all don't even 
Y'all don't even have the same mindset. Bianca loves this man so much that she's not even thinking about herself. She's so engulfed in what he's doing, how he's doing, who he's doing, and what he's doing that she's not thinking about herself. It's taking up so much of her energy that she's becoming psychotic. Girl, nobody wants to be around somebody like this. Then we got issue. The next one we got issues in the blame game, freestyle rap. Okay, with the rapping situation, Bianca and Chosa's rap was a rap. They knew what they were doing. Styles P and Adra rap. Styles P is talented. Adra, I'm sorry, but he overpowered you, overshadowed you. The man is definitely talented. We got Michelle A and Stu. Chef Stu didn't do a bad job at all. However, Michelle A, she was too hot. She was, you know, out there doing the whole shoulder bump. Yes, getting it in. Then we got Jocelyn and Ballistic. Jocelyn cannot rap. I am so sorry to say it. If everybody, if there's somebody out there that is a fan of her music, let me be honest with you. Nico's uh, uh, ex-wife slash, you know, girlfriend, whatever her name is, she was right about Jocelyn. Jocelyn cannot sing. She cannot rap. She had a hook because she knows how to make a rap song, but her talents as a rapper compared to everybody else that was there, you is not going anywhere. This will not be another Cardi B. Sully Jocelyn, I mean, you're entertaining as far as reality goes and on Zeus Network. I mean, you, you did great on those, but for rap, no ma'am, find another career. But Ballistic, he got her good. He basically said that I'm not marrying you until you communicate well. He did it with such a good twist. Ballistic, no, he, he has some talent, for real. Then we got CeeLo and Shawnee. CeeLo, <laughs> Shawnee tried, she gave it a try. She definitely gave an effort. She was spunky. She had attitude. She had swag. And I gave her props. But when CeeLo opened his mouth, child, you cannot take this man's musical, musical genius away from him. He knows what he's doing. He definitely earned his spot on the voice, child. He beat you with flying colors. And obviously, he's expected because he's CeeLo. I was very happy to see everybody show their talent, showcase it, and see what they can do. I think Stu, for somebody who doesn't rap, he did a good job. But CeeLo got it. CeeLo and Styles P, they got it. Then... We uh, During the whole uh, Jocelyn and Ballistic interaction, Ballistic says something about you need to learn how to treat me like a king. So I figured, let me tell y'all how to treat a man like a king. I'm a woman and I naturally am attracted to, I'm, I'm attracted to men. I don't know, well, I guess it can go both ways for both heterosexual and homosexual relationships. This is how you treat your man as a king. Make him lunch for school, for work or for school. Make sure that you rub his feet, give him a massage every so often. Make sure that you're affectionate, let him know you love him, but not too much to where he feels like he can take advantage of you. Do little things, leave a note in his, you know, in his backpack or his, or his car, in front of his car, let him know that you love and you're thinking about him do something spontaneous like wake him up in the middle of the night and give him some all you know treat him like he's the one person on this earth that you respect that you feel like will protect you that you feel like will have your back and do it in the most charming less aggressive more like you know willing to compromise way that is how you treat somebody like a king and when you're upset please exercise the emotional intelligence to articulate yourself if you can't do it while you're angry shut your mouth and do it when you're not mad, that way you don't escalate the situation. The whole point is you don't want to emasculate the person. You don't want to ruin, you know, make them feel like they're less than. You don't want to talk to them crazy because you're upset. That is how you treat somebody like a king. In the case of a woman, if he's a queen, we'll come back to that next time. But right now we're talking about Jocelyn and Ballistic, and this is what she needs to do. Sometimes it's best to just shut up and just let your actions speak for itself. Instead of telling the person, you got to do this, you got to do this. No, girl, that's not how it works. It doesn't. Then we got... The after rap session with Judge Lynn Toler and jury coming in saying, talking about this is a jury of your peers. Everybody's got to listen to each other's relationship and come up with the conclusion about what they think. Jocelyn and Ballistic uh, turn comes up and Michelle's insecure ass says, oh my gosh, Stu took my his arm off my shoulder as soon as you mentioned Jocelyn's name because Jocelyn is his type of woman. He finds her so beautiful. She says this in front of Ballistic and everybody else. Embarrassing. This is what I'm talking about. Treating somebody like a king. Embarrassing the heck out of him. She could have said that in private that that's how she felt. But she basically put him in an awkward position because now you're making it seem like in the, on the side he's looking at somebody else's girl and y'all at marriage boot camp. Michelle is paranoid. Paranoid. I love her, but she's paranoid. All Jocelyn could do was laugh. Excuse me. Then we got 
the judge telling CeeLo and Shawnee to drop their guard because we haven't really seen much into the relationship as much as we would like is very surface level. Hopefully as time goes by, we'll see more. This episode was about blame. They just blame each other by everything. Uh, the next time, the next, Michelle says that whenever Stu sees beautiful women, he moves his arm. We got that. That's a trigger for her. Bianca is basically, at the end of this whole session thing, is basically forcing Chosus to hug her. She's like lashed onto him like a freaking clit and glue. And he's doing that whole thing in high school where guys used to do because they thought they were thuggish, where the girl is trying to hug him and they're just holding their arms to the side, not even making an effort. Like they can't raise their hand to hug their girl. And she's like smothering him, being needy, begging him. And he's like, yo, get off me. Get off me. Bianca, let this man go. Find yourself. Get some independence. Occupy yourself. Don't make yourself too available or too wanting for him because then he's taking advantage of it. And that's what you're doing. This boy is immature and he's not ready to give you what you want. Be prepared for this relationship not to last and be prepared to get hurt. Get over it and let it go. Then we got the next episode that's going to come up next week. Jocelyn is going to continue to give Bianca and Chosen's her relationship advice. I think she said something like, Bianca, you're too toxic. And this is coming from Jocelyn Hernandez, the girl who punched Stevie in a therapy session, punched him in an elevator, punched Benzino's girl, Althea, attacked Tammy, tried to go after Rashida. She tried to go after Erica Dixon with Scrappy. She's the one telling people that you're toxic. Girl, save the relationship advice for yourself because Bianca at this point is getting annoyed and y'all know Bianca is going to attack Jocelyn. She don't care if she'll lose or not, but they're about to fight and I want to see that and see who's going to win because I think that this is going to be a very entertaining episode. Anyway, please like, subscribe, and the notification bell. I'm still working on my African-American tribute because I want to give you guys a history of what basically a history of who we are as a people and give you an opportunity to find out based on what I say who you are and it's going to be a tribute that I'm going to post and I hope you guys enjoy it as long as I hope you enjoyed this video as well now good night I'm tired and I hope you guys have a good weekend and a good holiday love you bye